Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Entrepreneur Showcase Series brought to you by Petronia Media LLC and Parkway Media Partners. I'm your host, Petronia Poonswan, and I have in the studio with me today some very special guests, the ladies behind Adam's Place, based right here in Las Vegas, a wonderful nonprofit that I've known for a long time. So excited, though, to have <clears throat> Kelly Boyers, Thomas Boyers, <laughs> for the first time in the studio, because I've known you for so long. I actually interviewed Kelly years ago when this organization just started, but she ha- is the founder, executive director of Adam's Place. We'll talk a little bit about what this organization is all about if you have not heard about it. Also, we have with us in the studio, we have uh, Jackie McLeod. She is the, let me get this right, chief program officer for Adam's Place. And also we have with us Dulce Diaz. She's the administrative coordinator <laughs> for this wonderful organization. So happy to have all of you in the studio, women doing great things in the community. That's all. I'm all about that. So, Kelly, let's start with you. Um, Adams Place has been around a big part of this community since about 2007. Now, fast forward to 2023. Can you believe it's 2023? <laughs> I know. I and know. it's just crazy. But what I really love about it is how you've grown this organization and all the great new things that's now happening. So first of all, Kelly, if people have not heard of Adams Place, what is this organization all about? Our mission is to provide support, peer support groups for children, teens, and families coping with grief and loss. Um, we started because there was a gap mm-hmm. in services, and there's lots of evidence and research that uh, gives us um, evidence in regards to this um, efficacy of support right. groups for children. There's a need groups. out there, and, and there wasn't need. really something at the time when you started this, something like this, right. and there's a big need. Um, and when you started this, obviously, you know, start from ver- something very personal to you, but then you start meeting so many people in the community who are facing the same thing. Absolutely. Through, right? It's it's the number one adverse childhood experience that ch- children will come into. And we know it's the first of many losses that we'll have over the course of our lifetime. Mm-hmm. And so those early adoption of coping skills, we want them to get set in a healthy direction. We want that family to help that family reorganize a, as it adjusts because it benefits us as a community yeah. as well as builds the resiliency in that family. So it builds a resilient family and a resilient community. And we've seen that over and over with the number of families that you've helped over the years, mm-hmm. you know. And I, what I love about this organization is you really target not just one age group. You, you go from the very little mm-hmm. to adults, mm-hmm. parents, mm-hmm. grandparents, people who are dealing with grief and loss. And, and having just gone through the pandemic... I think that was kind of a big turning point because you had to kind of switch around how you were doing things, but to help just this whole group of people that really needed this more than ever. Mm -hmm. And when one October happened, Mm -hmm. employers would call us because they had um, employees that were really stifled because they were coping with losses uh, um, triggered Mm -hmm. by the community event. As we are, as we get triggered with other issues and things that happen in our community. So whether it's in the workplace, in the school or in the family unit, grief is a topic that we don't tend to like to talk about, but, and, and what, and our mission is to be focused on prevention. Mm -hmm. If we come in to help set healthy coping skills or give examples, coach, model, then we know that that's going to set a path forward with more more towards academic success, continued individual success. Um, And we love to be a part of it. We love to be companions on that journey and help Mm -hmm. kids meet others that are going through similar life-changing experiences. Yeah. And, you know, we have some pictures that um, you sent to us of some of the kids and uh, who have taken part in so many services and programs. I'm going to have Jackie step in here because one of the things that have been around, I don't know, from from the beginning, Camp Cope. Mm -hmm. Um, Tell us a little bit about Camp Cope because now it's expanded. But what was the, Jackie, what is the mission behind this thing called Camp Cope? So our peer support groups, um, we developed some themes that are common to grief. Mm -hmm. Um, So we have a sort of curriculum, per se, that our children and families will kind of travel through on their journey. And it's really to make the most out of the time that they spend at Adam's Place together. Um, And as Kelly said, focus on learning um, healthy coping tools, how to identify their grief feelings, how to talk about them, um, and strategies that they can use in group and at home to help them cope with their loss. Yeah, we're seeing some of the pictures of the activities that kids are taking part because it's basically essentially 
you're providing as Adams plays as this peer support a toolbox really right giving these families kids to adults the tools that they can use to to cope with their grief and loss yeah that's a great term mm-hmm. we use that term at Adams place a lot yeah. their coping toolbox and it's just such a great service for the community to have this and I know you're starting um, when we started with just one location right and now talk to us about this expansion because you have both Summerlin and Henderson campus that are operating these camp yeah, We now. are so excited to be running our groups starting this fall in two locations. Mm-hmm. Um, so in Summerlin and in Henderson, they are both on the Roseman University respective campuses. Mm, okay. um, and both groups will start with dates in September. Well, let's pull up some of these because we have the Henderson dates and we have the Summerlin dates. So while we're pulling this up for people to look at, and this is coming up, I think, starting September, right? Camp mm-hmm. Cope with Camp Cope sessions. So we have the Summerlin Camp Cope sessions you can see there. Um, There's a different date. So if you're looking to be in Summerlin, check out those dates. And you have contact information. You can contact Ke- Kelly and Jackie and Dulce um, directly to go to this. So, so people have never been to a Camp Cope before. Jackie, talk to us about what's in the process. Because they're meeting. Do they have to come to all the meetings? Do, like, how does it work? Sure. Camp Cope meets once a month, Mm -hmm. um, and it is recommended that families attend all the sessions if they are able to do so. Um, They can learn more about Camp Cope by visiting our website um, where there's a link to register. Mm -hmm. Um, Before starting Camp Cope, they will attend a family orientation. Um, So that is virtual, but it'll go over the format of what group looks like. Um, It'll go over dates their session will start and end. Yeah. and everything that they need to know before getting started and starting group with And us. I've actually attended some of this um, and, and see how it works. And, and Kelly was there. It's just so amazing to me because you do break them up into different age groups, like the littles and the teens and the middles and the adults. And, mm-hmm. and what's great about this, Kelly, is that you're offering this service um, for people who have just gone through some very challenging, traumatic time trying to give to all these families totally free of charge. Mm-hmm. And the fact that for you to be able to do this for the community, you need a way to raise money. You know, we're calling this show Entrepreneur Showcase Series. You do have to be, in a way, Kelly, an entrepreneur. So talk to me about some of the things that you're doing right now to make sure you have the sustainable funding, to make sure all these families get the service free of charge. Absolutely. And I will give a shout out to um, Clark County Mm -hmm. and the state of Nevada Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, We get grants through both of those uh, Mm. government entities to help us provide, fill gaps in state um, social services. So we're thankful for that. But then we have as entrepreneurial mm-hmm. uh, entrepreneurial organization, yeah. how do we create some revenue and uh, that complements our grants? And so we have fundraisers throughout mm-hmm. the year. And we have one in the spring called Vintage and Vibes, and it's a wine tasting fun. And you've been the MC for that for us, and that's yeah. a great time. We've done that. That's our, our annual one that we've done for 14 years. Mm-hmm. But we are starting a new one this fall that we're super excited about. It's called Power the Purse. And we're targeting a focus who identify as female and females to come Mm -hmm. and we talk about um, we'll have great purse packages that'll have great items and they can bid on it. It's a live Mm -hmm. auction Uh, and we'll talk, tell a little bit about our story and why we do what we do, how it's cost effective for the programs or for the community to have a program like ours available. So we're doing that fundraiser power the purse November um, November 9th, I think. Yes. At the Sterling club and last Oh yes. Okay. So stay tuned for that. And, And let me, People know AdamsPlaceLV.org is your website, right? Correct. So for all kinds of information, whether it be upcoming galas and fundraisers, Camp Cope, that's where people can go. And the other thing that you're doing to raise money, which I think is really kind of really aligns with your mission, Kelly, is mm-hmm. the fact that you're pushing education yep. and training into your programming, which I think from the beginning, that's kind of what's been your goal. You want to help people in the community, but you want to make sure that this program expands so more people can get help. So mm-hmm. talk to us about what's new this year, because we do have some training coming up that people can sign up for. Yes. And yeah. really this evolved through the pandemic when we were, we were able to turn on a dime and, and provide virtual mm-hmm. groups and, and we were awarded an outside agency by Nevada School Counselors Association right. because agency we were, of the year because of what you did there, yes. right? Yeah. So, so then as we were doing those virtual training or virtual groups, mm-hmm. we were training individuals and training schools at the same time. And we said, you know what, this is how we're going to get to more kids. Right. If we provide our curriculum, train, um, 
social workers, counselors, a school staff to run their own camp cope, that takes transportation out of the barrier, right? right? Mm-hmm. So, so you can do all this virtually. Yes. Oh, so wow. we did, we trained 20 schools last year to run a camp cope. Which Just were, all over the country? Uh, uh, no, or right just here in, in Clark County. Oh, wow. So uh, from middle schools, yeah. uh, elementary, high schools. So, and we've, and we offer coffee and coaching once a mm. month and continuing education. So we're not going to train you and then leave. Mm-hmm. We're really trying to foster relationships because we will learn and we'll build the competency. We've trained Nevada Donor Network to run mm-hmm. Camp Cope, Nathan Adelson Hospice to run their own Camp Cope, and One Care Hospice. So the more that we can raise the competency and foster um, self care amongst those who do facilitate and work with this population all the time. We want to be a trusted resource. And we, Jackie and I um, attended a national conference this year mm-hmm. we all, that we always attend. And we brought back some great new information and some folks that we met that we really thought were great at um, giving presentations about specific skills yeah. when, lear- when working with kids who are coping with grief and loss. So we're hosting our... Uh, so I And I want to back up. So that's yeah. how the idea of becoming more more of a um, educational resource, so mm-hmm. we thought we need a marketplace, yeah. and we we pitched the idea to um, Palms Casino through a grant, and they really liked it because one of our uh, webinars is diversity, e- equity, and inclusion right. and grief work, and they they really like the idea that we're trying as a small nonprofit mm-hmm. to raise the competency level and at least start the conversation in some areas that they that mom profits might not get a chance to have yeah. uh, education. So um, you can register through our website. So we're expanding that whole webinar education with a mm-hmm. mixture of webinars and in-person presentations. Mm-hmm. And with uh, one that we're doing on November 28th, the National Children's Grief Support Group um, conference. Mm-hmm. So we're bringing in folks from across the country to present that day. It's a one-day seminar. And we're excited to and be able to host National Children's Grief Awareness Month, if I'm not Correct. Right in yes, November, so yes. it's perfect to to hold that event. There's so much coming up, and that's and it, you maybe we can uh, pull up um, teleproducer if he can pull up this uh, the flyer just to kind of give people an idea of all the things you have coming up because it's really great. I know um, I think the one he might be pulling up is um, where you list all the different, different webinars. webinars that are coming up, and you mention it, um, Kelly. The first one that's coming up here, August 29th. So we right. want to put. Really highlight it because that's the one that's coming up. And that's the one on diversity, equity, and inclusion yeah. in grief work that you mentioned. And that is um, happening Tuesday, August 29th from 10 to 11. And this is virtual, right? So right. people can sign up right. online. And it's only $12, which right. is really affordable. And there's a CEU for um, social workers, You get credit teachers, for that as well. And uh, counselors. Yeah. So we're looking at the list now, August, and you have on September, October, November. So the goal really is you want this and so many different topics, which I think is the growth now. You are expanding it to cover more things because you want people to be able to come to your marketplace, really educational marketplace year round. That's yes. the goal. Yes. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Because that's how we'll reach exponentially and um, uh, more children, right? Mm-hmm. As we, as folks in there, whether they're uh, involved in a church or a different school or boys and girls, or wherever they may be working with children, they're coping with loss of grief. We increase their competency um, and their uh, grief sensitivity. Yeah. We're, we'll all benefit. And Dulce has done a great job on keeping, yeah. getting the word out. I want to touch out. on Dulce yes. because what's really great, and ever since I started, you know, uh, working with you a while ago, you've always been so supportive of young people in mm-hmm. this community, whether it be high school students, college students, like Dulce here, who I believe, are you going to Nevada State College? Yes, Is that right? Yeah. So Dulce, tell me a little bit. You just started with this organization this summer, but what was your interest of get, wanting to get into this organization and be able to help people like Kelly and Jackie? Well, I'm just currently studying psychology, mm-hmm. and a big part of that, a uh, part of why I wanted to join, um, be a part of just everything that has to do with psychology is yeah. to help. And so very big, um, I can go into a helping profession, and this is exactly what we do at Adams Place. So I'm very grateful that I have been brought on board mm-hmm. because I've learned a lot already. So I'm What's gaining it? that experience. And she's for graduating. Sure. Yeah, yes. 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 Yeah. And that was that's so amazing because Kelly, you were saying you're a big part of just helping young people in this community because you want this to be a growing experience, not just okay, end it here. But she can really take it on Absolutely. to do other things in her life, even if it's not directly with Adams place. Correct. Right. Correct. I, I think that's uh, uh, part of the mission, wherever you are, to help children mm-hmm. and to have a t- 
tools on your tool belt as a college student, as a college graduate, and whatever profession you're in, if you've got some extra experience that are, it's practical and relevant, how, how great is that for us to contribute to that? Yeah. And Delsa, what's your advice for, for other maybe students who are listening right now or vol- potential volunteers wanted to come work with an organization like this? What would you say to them? What's really special about this organization for you? To me, I think it's very, uh, it's such a great learning experience. You're going to get a lot of experience in general for the field that you're going to be in. Yeah. So definitely just go out there and try your best to do it. I've been really putting myself out there, um, and here I am now, and I feel so great about being able to help people. What are you excited about? I know you're going to be taking part in facilitating some of the camp codes that are coming up, right? Yes, that's actually the part I'm most excited about. (laughs) Yeah, actually working with the kids or whatever age group I'll be helping um, just definitely want to be doing that one-on-one. Yeah, and Jackie, this must be really rewarding for you to see someone like Dulce coming in because you're a is it a child life? Yeah, specialist? I'm a I'm a certified child life specialist. That's right. Um, and I worked prior to here at Adams Place 15 years in the pediatric hospital setting. Um, and I actually found Adams Place 10 years ago when I started volunteering um, in their support group. Oh wow. Yeah. So that's how you got into this organization, through the volunteer opportunity with Adam's Place. Yes. That's awesome. So tell me about that experience then. When you were volunteering, what kind of like triggered you? Like, hey, this is something that I think I really want to get into. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of encouragement from a friend of mine who is also a child life specialist who was volunteering with Adam's Place. And she said, come, just come with me. You're going to love it. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I really did. It was helping. Um, I see a lot of children and families. In the hosp- in, from our community in the hospital, but it was very nice to work with children and families and use my skill set mm-hmm. outside of the hospital walls as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other child life specialist who was volunteering and I worked really hard with Kelly on a lot of the activities and some of the curriculum um, for group, and that's a big chunk of what they're still using today. Yes. Um, I moved away from the Las Vegas area for a few years, um, and so when I came back, I was very happy that Kelly had an opportunity for me. You must to be come. excited oh, that she's back in so town. So excited! <laughs> yeah, and it worked out so well because we were able to go to the national conference in Pittsburgh this year together, mm-hmm. and then get started back on August first in our, in in the community again, which is great. And Jackie, I think I'm a huge supporter of child life specialists, and not everybody understands what their scope is. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you want to just share a little bit about that? Sure. Um, We're trained to work with children and families, um, typically in a healthcare setting, um, but to cope with illness, injury, grief, and loss. Um, But as our profession grows, um, I think you're going to start seeing child life specialists a lot more outside of the hospital in places like grief centers or court systems, Mm. places where kids need um, education about what's happening around them and coping techniques for how to move forward. And I would imagine, Kelly, that, you know, there's such a big need for resources like that, that it's probably hard to find someone like Jackie oh, here yes. in our community, it right? Is. Yes, it is. It's just, I, I mean, I mean, in, one of the reasons why they they left the community mm-hmm. was because of the pandemic, which was very sad in and right. of itself. But then for them to make this journey back to us, we're as a community very fortunate, and part that's part of our recovery, right? Mm-hmm. Is to bring back those folks and provide opportunity and um, uh, for them. Yeah. So we're very excited, and Jackie networks extremely well with with the. Um, group of child life specialists who might you might find them in hospices you'll find so them in trauma a network center here, right, that you work yes. with so and so we're very fortunate child life specialists if you've been involved um one of the reasons why they're uh, needed in trauma is because there's often death and loss right mm-hmm. and and there's these folks are trained to be able to help children yeah. in that real time moment and when i looked across at all the professions that's that's what we need in what, in our grief center so with having social work students uh, psychology students mm-hmm. child life specialists and and volunteering we'll take anyone from any profession and we'll ask them to take their hat off and put on yeah. a facilitator hat and we'll provide So you're always training. looking for volunteers. Always looking okay. for volunteers and we're building that back post pandemic. Mm-hmm. But we're right now about 25 volunteers that okay. have trained so that's really great and one of the reasons why we can do groups in Summerlin and Henderson mm-hmm. and then also we've got our partners you know, at a donor network, Nathan Adelson Hospice, One Care Hospice having various Camp Copes. So now in real time you should be able to get to a Camp Cope. If yeah. we're not hosting one at that time, maybe one of our 
where our community partners are. And then we also suggest that the family look to make sure to see if their school is offering a Camp Cope because ah. that's an, another option. Okay. So we're, we've really tried to make it part of our mission to um, make accessibility um, not a problem for kiddos. Yeah, no, this is just so amazing because for me, I'm just impressed with how big it's grown and the impact that all three of you and other people in your staff are doing for the community right now. I know we have to wrap here in just a few minutes, but I just want to let people know. So adamsplacealv.org is your website, right? So if right. they want to sign up for any of the programs that we talked about today, is that the best place to go? That 24 seven yeah. adamsplacealv.org. Mm -hmm. Families can register anytime uh, and I'll walk them through and they'll get follow up emails. So it's very efficient. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also for our educational marketplace, all the info is there to volunteer, mm -hmm. push a button to. Yeah. So the webinars, you know, first one coming up August 29th. So that's time sensitive. Register for that. That's mm -hmm. coming up next week already. And all you can see all the other ones. Camp Cope is starting in September. So you have that listed on your website as well, both yep. the Summerlin. And Henderson, which I think great that you're reaching everybody in the community. People want to volunteer or work like Dulce with your organization, right? They yeah. can they can go to that website and get more information. Um, any any last word, Kelly? What do you want to say to this community that you've been there for them, but they've been there for you in a big way? Uh, absolutely true. Yeah. And thank you for um, bringing that up because we would not, um, when we first started this back in 2009, we had to hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. And the seed money that we had, you know, just... It didn't touch the amount of need that that that. Would. So our yeah. community partners from Land River Jaguar Las mm -hmm. Vegas to the Win Employee Foundation that just recently gave us a great gift. Oh wow! Uh, and entrusting us with that, uh, R Richard Harris Law for everyone yeah. from every industry has been stepping up to help us because someone in their employee base has probably been in touch mm -hmm. with our organization and it's always been there free for them. So we are grateful for the type of community we have that's wrapped their arms around us and we want to be able to be there for generations to come. That's so great. Well, that's a great way to end this conversation and all the good things that you're doing. Again, adamsplacealv.org is a place where you can find all great information about this nonprofit. Thank you again to Kelly and Jackie and Dulce for all the work that you're doing for the community. It's so great. And I, I just love to see your success. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you so being much. part of it. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of Entrepreneur Showcase Series. And we'll see you again 